What's up YouTube? It is your boy JV and I am here today with the review for Power. This is season number six. This is episode five. So we're at the halfway mark of the season. We got five more episodes left before they take a break, do they take a break, and then they'll come back and they'll do the last I think it's I think it's 15 episodes in this season. So they're gonna do 10. So like I said, they're gonna cut it in half. 10 now, five in January, I believe. So, without further ado, you know, the video, the episode was titled King's Gambit. I believe that's what it was like, titled. I haven't pulled up my notes yet. Crazy, right? I need to pull up my notes. And I'm yelling. But this episode had me, like, so fucked up. Yeah, Knight was not King's Gambit. It's Knight's Gambit. So, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into the video and the episode. All right. So, the episode opens up. We're at Choke. We see Tariq. Tariq is playing a game of chess with Effie. So, you know, Effie is telling him how he's very predictable when it comes to his moves. And, you know, you know, Effie is almost like she's trying to school Tariq on what he's doing wrong. And and then Tariq actually ended up winning that game. And I'm and then, you know, he get a text message from uh, Vincent. And Vincent is telling him that, you know, double the uh, weight is due today. Homework is due. So, you know, Tariq, she says, you got to do something. He says, yeah. So we see uh, Effie leave his room. And as she's leaving his room... She, um, she gets her phone and she's texting someone and is listed as unknown. And she's telling the person, whoever unknown is, that it looks like maybe the, you know, the competition is low on, 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 on drugs. But she's going to keep her eye on Tariq. And I'm just like, whoa, I did not see that coming. Like, Effie? I knew there was something off about Effie, but I just did not think that she was going to, I thought, I just didn't think she was going to do, be like a rat or whatever. I didn't think she was going to flip or I didn't know what to expect from Effie but I knew something was off of her in that first episode when you know Therese's roommate was telling him that she wanted to meet with him or else she was going to tell you know the dean of the school that he was dealing drugs there so I knew something was off with her but I didn't know what it was so then we see Tariq he's in the AV room and you know he is he has the drugs he has the drugs that he took from Tommy and then he still has he has some some Look like maybe like, you know, um, prescription, like not prescription drugs, but you know, like the over-the-counter drugs, like, you know, how you have your Tylenol and you have your Equate. So it looked like he had some of those because he was looking at them and he was trying to match them, make sure that they looked identical. So that way he could send it, give it to Vincent so that way Vincent could, you know, distribute it however the hell he wants to distribute it. And then Tariq is free and clear. But I'm thinking to myself, like, Tariq, you know that's stupid, right? Drug dealers know what the actual drugs look like versus like a placebo, um, a knockoff. They know the difference. So I don't know why Tariq is playing a, like Tariq is playing a dumbass game at this point. And I'm just like, you little dumbass. You're playing a stupid, 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 stupid game. <sighs> and then we see in the shadows, who's looking at him? None other than little Effie. I'm like, oh God, this little girl is going to be trouble. But, you know, when, when it comes to Tariq, I really do not care. Like, I don't 100% care. So then we see Tariq. He returns to Vincent with the drugs. And I'm just like, you are in for a rude-ass awakening, little homie. Like, I just feel like you're in for it. So then we see Tasha. Tasha is at choke. And then the dean is telling um, Tariq and Tasha that someone saw him when he was, you know, in, they saw him in the old AV room. And, you know, T Tasha was like, well, is it... A, is it a crime family being in the OAV room? He says no. But we did find this. And he had the bag of drugs. And Tariq said that those weren't actual drugs. But he says, but when you're selling them, you know, people do people know that they're not drugs? He says no. He says, okay, you're expelled. So, you know, get what you can get out of here now. And the rest of it, we'll, we'll mail it to you. I'm like, well, damn. They'll mail it to him? <laughs> cool. I mean, it is what it is, little buddy. You, you're you stupid. All right, you guys. So let's talk about Saxo. Extra dumbass. So we see Sax and Blanca. They are, you know, going over everything because the autopsy has come back on Angela's body. So, you know, now they now Blanca, however, has realized maybe James did not actually kill, you know, uh, Angela because, you know, the autopsy report shows that the bullet that was lodged into Angela, that they, they took... It, the, tra the, the trajectory of it, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping over my words, but the trajectory of it, it was coming down. And also, the blood splatter on James's clothes, 
confirm that. But Sax, he's so fucking stupid. It's like he, you could, it's like Tommy, could, somebody could be in front of him committing the crime. He'd be like, oh, that was James St. Patrick who did that. Are you serious? But the murderer was just right there in front of you, but you still think it's James St. Patrick. And what it is is Sax is saying that, so he doesn't feel, so okay, he didn't shoot her. You know, maybe he set her up. And I'm like, set her up. And, and you know, Blanca made a good point. If he set her up, why would he call the police? Why would he call the cops to have an ambulance come and pick her up? Like, that makes no sense. If he set this up, he, he orchestrated this whole thing, wouldn't you think he would get rid of the body instead of actually calling the cops? Because then that would be like a red flag. Hmm. You know, she was getting ready to, she was going to turn on him, but now she's dead? Well, she's shot at this time, at that time, but now she's dead? Like, Sax is the dumbest person on this show. One of, one of the dumbest people on this show. There's a lot of them on here, but Sax is number one on the list. He's, it's like he got. It's like he has a hard on for James, and I just don't get what it is. Like, like she's clearly telling you the autopsy report shows otherwise. But again, he doesn't want to hear it. So then we see Sax. He meets up with Dre, and you know, he's upset with Dre because Dre doesn't have any information for him. And, you know, he shows him his daughter. He's like, you need to give me something. I don't care what it is. Get me something. And, you know, he says, uh, he tells him about ghosts. And how, he was like, how did he even know about, you know, where Maria was? Well, the reason why he knows where Maria was is because you let Dre follow your dumb ass to her apartment. Duh. You should have made sure nobody was following you. Again, Sax is dumb. So then he tells him, you know, then, uh, you know, Dre tells him about Jason Talking about he's Tommy's you know drug supply and that he's um, ghost talked to him at the at the um, at uh, Truth and you know um, then you know while they're talking uh, Sax gets a text from Warner to meet at his office now in all caps so then he goes into the office and you know he um, Warner tells him that Maria has changed her story and then you know he mentions how he set a trap for James St. James and you know like everything that he's done. I'm like, wait a minute, but everything he's doing is illegal. The illegal wiretap on uh, Proctor, um, you know, the CI with uh, Dre. None of this is on the book. So all of this stuff is illegal. So if they go to court, there's nothing that they can use because it was illegally obtained. I'm, again, all these people are stupid to me. God. Okay, so then he tells um, Warner that, you know, James was there and he paid her off. And he said that he has a CIN Dre. But again, you don't technically have a CIN Dre because, number one, you're blackmailing him. Number two, this is illegal, so it's not admissible in court. And then, you know, um, he says, you know, you know, um, then he says he doesn't know how Dre knew where, he, where she was. He followed you. Like, are you stupid? So then, you know, Sax is like, well, you know what? We can use Proctor. We have him, you know, he's having this whole custody battle with his ex-wife, Lindsay. And then Warner's like, she's dead. And, I'm, and you know, Sax didn't know nothing about this. Of course. And then, you know, they say Proctor's the one that called it in. And Blanca wonders, why was he even there? His daughter? He has a child with her? What planet did these people... What school did they go to? Like, did these people... How did they become law enforcement? God... So then they, you know, um, they said they're going to go pay a visit to Proctor. So Sax says, can I join? I would have said, absolutely not. You cannot. You've done enough. And not enough. That's good. So then we see Dre talking to Ghost about his dealings with Jason. And, you know, he's trying to get some information out of him. But Ghost is like, I don't work for him. And, you know, he says he's, what he is, what he's doing is he's looking for a new distro. Since his current one is fucking it up. And unless he finds him a replacement. And Dre was like, well, you know, why don't I be it? And Ghost was like, you, you're working with Sax. So if Jason finds out that you're working with Sax, you're dead. If if Sax finds out you're working with Jason, you're going to jail. So you're it's a lose-lose situation either way it goes. I'm just like, exactly. Nobody is thinking things through. None of these people think anything through. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> Again, most of these people on this show are stupid retardedly stupid no offense but they are just so slow like god these have got to be the dumbest people 
on the face of the fucking earth. All right, so next we got Tommy. You know, he's with Tasha. And, you know, Tasha's just talking about how she feel like this whole daycare thing is a big mistake because she didn't think about the overhead cost. She didn't think about anything, basically. How much it would cost to actually run a daycare. And, you know, Tommy tells her, you know what, I got you. And, you know, he'll tell Keisha, she's like, no, I don't need money. She, she wanted to, you know, clean the money through the uh, daycare for him. He's like, no, nah, I don't need that. He says, you know, Keisha is going, Keisha's cleaning the money through her salon. And Tasha's like, the only reason she's doing that is because she doesn't want you to work with me. Like, don't you see that? Yeah, he sees it. He just doesn't give a fuck. That's his problem. So then Tommy, you know, uh, Tasha's like, you know, she Tasha tells him, like, be careful with Lakeisha. Because, you know, she don't know, she doesn't, um, well, she just tells him to be careful with Lakeisha. I think what's going to happen is Lakeisha's going to fuck up in some way, form, or fashion. Eventually, I think, so, my thing is, I believe, I believe Lakeisha's going to die at some point. I want Sax to die. And I definitely see, I know Tommy's going to die. Tommy's going to die. I, I see Ghost dying. But... I don't know which order I'm. I don't know what order, but I definitely see Lakeisha dying. I don't know if it's gonna be because she gets her. I don't know if she's gonna get too deep into something and fuck something up, or if somebody's gonna. Or if it's like Vincent or somebody, they might use her as a shield, you know, or you know, use her to get the Tommy. Don't know, but we'll see. But I don't see her lasting very fucking long. I pray to God she doesn't last long. She annoys me. She really does. So then, you know, um, you know, uh, Tommy was asking Keisha, I'm mean, not Keisha, but Tasha, does she still have access to the penthouse? She says, no, Tommy, you're not going to kill ghosts. Like, not at least not right now. So then we see Tasha at the daycare, and she got this little boy there with her, and it's dark around, and then this girl comes in, her name is Epiphany, who's a stripper, and she's like, Epiphany, you're late. Like, your hours late. We closed hours ago. And I'm like, wait a minute. Huh? <laughs> you guys closed hours ago and you still have this little boy? Yeah, I would ask some little homie. Like, where your mama work at? I was working at a strip club. Guess where you finna, you finna go on a field trip to the strip club with your mama. I, I'm sorry, but you gotta go on a field trip because uh, I'm not finna stay here this late at night because your mama is irresponsible. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that. It's irresponsibility. You don't leave your kids. I mean, I get it. Shit happens. But that, I mean, it was like it was late at night. Like, super late. No. Come get your kid. Come get your kid. So, as, um, you know, Tasha's getting ready to walk out, I think his name was Zig or something like that. This dude comes up to her, talking about, you know, she didn't get permission from the community. She's like, you know, I got councilman. Hey, he's like, that's not who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the street community. I'm like, oh, so this nigga finna push up on her for some money. And he did. He told her she had 24 hours to have his money. I looked at him like, nigga, who the fuck you talking to? She's like, there are cameras right here. He's like, yeah, there's cameras right here, but you know, I want my money. If I don't get it, this nice little place can go up in flames. And I'm thinking to myself, Tasha, if you don't go tell your ex-husband, I know he's a piece of shit and an asshole, but if you don't go tell Ghost what's going on and let Ghost handle this nigga, figure it out. Like, what? You're not gonna sit here and store me for money. Fuck out of here. So then we see Tasha. She's at one of these clothing stores and she's trying to return her clothes. And the little uh, the girl behind the counter, she says, "Ma'am, if you need money, you can go to the ATM machine." I said, "Oh, oh, oh. Huh. that was hella funny to me." She said, "You can go to the ATM machine." So then Keisha comes in there, and I'm like, "Oh God!" And Keisha's telling her how you know she knew she met Kate. And, you know, Kate made the comment about Holly. And then she asked her, what do you know? What do you know about Holly? And Tasha tells her, pay, you know, Tasha says, pay Kate no mind. Like, none of us do. And then, you know, Tasha tells her basically that Holly got in over her head. And that she doesn't need to, she needs to not do the same thing. And Keisha says, oh, well, you know, I got Tommy on lock. I'm like, oh, you got Tommy on lock. Cross that psychopath and we'll see how much, how locked down you got him. Cross that psychopath, and then we'll see. Because that's what happens. If you, I mean, you double cross him, he's going to your ass. Just going to blast you. Speaking of blast, we're going to get into the middle a little bit. So then we see Tasha and Tommy together again. And, you know, uh, 
he tells her that, you know, uh, Keisha asked about Holly. Well, she tells him that Keisha asked about Holly. And, you know, you know, she says she didn't tell her anything. And then, you know, she tells him about Tariq and how he was, at, you know, um, he's at the penthouse right now. And also, Proctor was, you know, there as well. And, you know, he was looking like, oh, is that so? So then Tasha, you know, asked him for some money. He says, I can't do that because after the whole running you had with Keisha, she's upset and she don't want to fuck with you. Um. So then, you know, she get, he gets mad at uh, Tasha because... You know, um, he said, the same thing you do with Keisha is the same shit you did with Holly. He tells her, get the fuck out of my car. And I'm like, well, wow. Like, you really gonna turn your back on your friend of years for some new piece of ASS that you just started messing with. Really, Tommy? Cool. I see you. You wouldn't be a friend of mine. You would not be a friend of mine ever in life. Like, no way in hell would Tommy be a friend of mine. So then, you know, we see uh, she goes, uh, Tasha goes up to Zig and she's like, you know what? I can help you because I've heard on the streets that you're pushing weight and I can help you. And he says, you can push weight. She's like, you don't know nothing about me. And I was like, he sure does not know anything about you. So he's like, here, move this and give it back to bring me the money back. And I'm like, wait a minute. And Zig, you're stupid as hell. So you don't even know this woman from Tom's cat. And you gonna give her some some drug some drugs to push for you? She could have been uh, undercover DEA. She could have been anything. You don't know who she is. And you just gonna freely give her some drugs? Smart ass. Smart ass. All right. So next we see Tommy. Tommy breaks into um you know Maria's apartment. Now she, Maria and Sax come into her apartment. So Tommy goes and hides in the closet. So he's overhearing the whole conversation. And see, I thought, and I'm going to get into them in a little bit, but when it came down to Sax, this whole episode, I thought he was playing both, you know, everybody against everybody. But in this instance, Maria actually had changed her story. And she said that her blindfold fell down and she did see who killed her boyfriend and it was Tommy and Ghost. And I'm like, oh, so she really did flip and change her story. But then I'm sitting here thinking to myself, so if she's changed her story, that does not make her a credible witness, so you can't use her on the stand. So I don't even know why Sax met with her, and then Sax dropped the bomb that you know they were using, um, they were going to use uh, Ghost and Tommy's lawyer against them to you know testify. I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, god damn! And you got a psycho in the closet listening to you. So then once Sax leaves, Tommy comes out. Blast her right in the forehead. I'm like, damn. Point blank range. Okay. If you say so. So then we see Tasha. Tasha is talking to Epiphany on the phone. And I guess what Tasha's going to do is try to use Epiphany and some of the other women that have to come to the daycare with their kids to sell the drugs for her. And Epiphany's like, girl, you know, um, what did she say to her? I know it, in, at the end of it, she has a kid, she's still dancing. I'm like, girl, really? Can you still dance? Okay, Epiphany. That's all you think about, huh? Shaking your ass for some money. Have at it. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and just get into Proctor. So see Proctor, he's talking to his cousin Benny about Lindsay. You know, so Proctor is the one that set up everything for Lindsay. He set up that fake letter from the bar association that she failed. He lied to her about, which we all knew about that. He lied about, you know, him being in a relationship. This was for him to, you know, for her to go down a, you know, a bad path. So that way he wouldn't have a big issue when it comes to the, um, you know, custody of little Elisa Marie. So then Warren and Sax show up to question him. And then they talk about, you know, Maria saying she remembered more about, you know, the night that her boyfriend was killed. So Sax says, you know, um, he needs to use the restroom. So when he does use it, says he goes, goes to use the restroom, he goes down the hall and he goes to the little Elisa Marie's backpack and he takes the bug off the backpack. I'm like, really? I'm like, God damn. I wish, I'm, I wish Cousin Benny was actually in that, because, you know, Proctor told Cousin Benny, go upstairs. I wish Proctor had told Cousin Benny, go down there. And I'll send him, like, God, I, I just want Sax to die. That's all I want is for Sax to die. So then Proctor goes and talks to Ghost, and he asks, like, what happened between you and what happened with Maria? He says, I gave her some money so that, you know, she could start a new life. And he's like, well, she changed her fucking mind. And Proctor says that you need to kill her is what you need to do. 
Um, and you know, Jen's like, but she was innocent before and she's innocent now. Um, did you not hear what he said? She can, she's going to testify against you and he doesn't care. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So then he gets a text message from um, Ramona and she tells him that Tate bombed and he wants him back on. Which I'll get into that a, a little bit later. What happened between, uh, you know, Ramona, Tate and a uh, ghost. So then we see prior to he meets up with Tommy and Tommy is upset with him about, you know, the fact of him not telling him that Ghost was on, you know, he and Ghost were doing the same thing when it came to Alicia Jimenez. And Prior was like, I didn't tell Ghost about you and I didn't tell you about Ghost, so I'm free and clear. And then, you know, he, t um, so then, you know, Proctor told him about Maria and how Ghost paid her off. And Tommy's like, of course he would. That's just like him. So then we see Saxo, no good ass. So he's following Proctor. He has he's playing a recording for Proctor, you know, of him letting Lindsay die. And he tries to blackmail him by asking him who killed Angela. And Proctor goes to talk to Benny and he said that, you know, he said, you know, um he told well, I've already said this. He said, um, you know, Aunt Lindsay up to die. And then he tells him that Sax has a bug. He has a bug. But the whole thing with this bug is it's illegal. Like, he didn't go through the proper channels to get this bug put on little Elisa Marie's backpack. So, everything he has is illegally obtained and admissible in court. So, I don't know why Project even took him so seriously. I, I really don't. So, you know, um, so then, you know, because of Vinny's talking about the computer that, you know, he has with all that information on it, you know, the guy that Tommy killed last season. And he tells him, I got rid of the laptop. And I'm like, you did what? You got rid of that laptop? Why? And because it has some implicating stuff on there about ghosts. I'm like, okay, why would you get rid of it? Keep that shit for insurance purposes. So, you know, Benny is like, you know, he can get rid of Tommy. And he can get rid of Tommy and ghosts. And, you know, Proctor says, no, I would have let him sit. I would have, I feel like, oh, that's a, that's a good one. Which we're going to get into that in a little bit. We're going to get into that. You know, and he also told him, you know, we can get you out of, we can get you a little, at least we out of town, like right now. He says, no. So then we see Sax. He returns back to Proctor with some paperwork for him to be a CI. And Proctor's like, uh, no, I'm not going to be a rat. That's not who I am. And he asks him once again, who killed Angela? And he tells him, Tommy did it. And, um, and that James had nothing to do with it. I'm like, oh shit, Proctor. Like, why would you do that? Oh God. Poor Proctor. Proctor, Proctor, Proctor. So then we see Proctor and Elisa Marie. They show up at James and he asks him if he can stay there. He come up with a real, a, a, a good story about why he's there. He didn't tell it about Tommy, but he come up with a story and, you know, um, because he's testifying against one of his clients. And James is like, you know, I'm not running a ha you know, a halfway house. I'm not running a, you know, a, um, a witness protection house. But he tells him, even he says, okay, yeah. So then Tasha comes in with Tariq and, you know, she tells Ghost, your, she was like, Tasha, what the fuck are you doing here? She says, I'm here because your son still has access to this place. And he's like, she says he got kicked out. He got expelled out of school for selling drugs. And then Ghost is like, what the fuck was you doing? And I'm like, can you hit him? Punch him. Beat his ass. Do something to him. But he didn't. Now, here's the thing that got me. Ghost wanted to blame Tasha for everything. And I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all both his parents, so y'all both to blame for all the shit that Tariq does. So it's not one against the other. It's both of you. So then we see Lily's Elisa Marie, and she asks Proctor, like, what's going on? He says he's protecting her. So then he gives her this locket with a secret inside, and it looks like a little thumb. It's not a thumb drive. It's like um a little USB, like a, a little USB that you like put into a slide into a camera or like a little chip. He tells her it's a secret, and I'm like, oh, so Proctor might have got rid of that laptop, but he he kept the contents of it, and he put it somewhere else. I'm like, that's smart. That's smart. So then later we see um, Proctor, he gets a call from one of his clients, I guess, asking him for help, asking him to meet up, and he says, nah, man, I can't do it. He's like, he's like, you know, um, once everything is settled, you know, I'm staying with a friend right now in Tribeca, and once they hang up the phone, then a guy tells Two bit old dumbass that you know he's in Tribeca and are we good? He says, Yeah, I'm good, but you're not. And pop, 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 kills him. I'm like, Well, damn, we just killing niggas like all over the place today, huh? So then, you know, uh, two bit calls Tommy, tells him, You know, I don't, I didn't get an address, but 
He's somewhere in Tribeca, and Tom's like, I know where that is. I got it. So then we see him call Tariq, and he tells Tariq to leave the back door open and get out. So then as Tariq is getting ready to leave, you know, he can hear a little Elisa Marie crying, and she's looking at photos of her mom, and he goes in and checks on her. He's like, so can I take you? You want to go out for some ice cream? She's like, I don't like ice cream. He says, you don't like ice cream? I'm like, hell, I don't, I mean, I love ice cream, but I shouldn't eat ice cream because I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I hate being lactose intolerant. God, I hate being lactose intolerant. So, you know, he says, well, how about hot chocolate? She says, okay. And they, they leave out. Mm. Now, this scene right here that's coming up that I'm about to talk about, this shit took me all the way out because I was just sitting here like I was like no so we see Tommy's old headstrong ass go to the penthouse and you know he's screaming for Pro Proctor and you know he goes in there and he starts just blasting I'm like well damn with a big ass machine gun I'm like damn so, you know, he starts shooting and, you know, he does, at, at one point he hit Proctor in the leg. So Proctor goes into little Raina's room and, you know, he call, he's he's looking for Lisa Marie. So he calls her and she's like, you know, she's like, he's like, are you here? She says, no. He says, okay, go to Uncle Vinny's. She says, well, will you be there with me? He says, no. My heart broke when he told her no. And she, I think she knew at that moment that her daddy was about to die. I was like, oh my God. Like, she just lost her mama and now she's lost her dad. I'm like, fuck. And then Tommy, you know, but I was so happy with Proctor because Proctor didn't go down without a fight because Proctor took out the gun and I forgot to mention, Benny gave Benny gave him a gun. So he started shooting, pop, 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 pop. Never once hit Tommy, but I was happy that he went out like a G. And then, you know, Tommy came in the room and he just blasted him with the gun. I'm like, damn. Fuck. So, what I was going to say earlier is with Cousin Vinny, Cousin Vinny asked Proctor that he want him to take out Ghost and Tommy. What I feel like is going to happen, Cousin Vinny's going to take out Tommy. He's going to retaliate for his cousin's death. I have a feeling. Mark my words, Cousin Vinny, I believe, is going to take out Tommy. So then, um, Tariq, you know, he does take um, little Elisa Marie over to, you know, Cousin Vinny's. And Cousin Vinny is like, thank you. And then we'll, I'm, I'm going to pause right here, and we're going to move forward. All right, so then we have Ghost. So Ghost was with Ramona and Tate, and he was telling them, like, you know what, I'm going to step back from this project right about now because, you know, that, that boy, the guy, Will, he came up, and, you know, he was saying some, all that stuff he was saying is true about me, and, you know, he can't really shake his past. And Tate is like, yes, you should step back, James. But, you know, she's, uh, Ramona's like, no, you don't need to step back. In fact... You know, when you step, step, stepped up at that last conference, it made his poll numbers go up. And Taylor's like, we don't have any factual proof that that happened. And then she tells him that, you know, there's a round table that's coming up. And, you know, they want the candidates to bring in, bring activists with them. So she wants Tate to take, um, you know, James with him. And then I, I already said it, you know, she texted James earlier. She texted James and told him that Tate bombed and he wants him back on. So this is what she was talking about. So then we see Ghost and Ramona having dinner with each other, and they're talking about Tate. And, you know, she's just talking about second chance, and I'm like, yeah, you want a second chance? Like, you're trying to get some dick from him. Like, that's all it is. Just say you want some dick, and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So then we find, lastly in the episode, Ghost finds out that Maria is dead, and, you know, uh, he goes home, and he finds out that Proctor is dead, and his penthouse is fucked the hell up. So then Tariq calls Ghost and he texts Tommy to meet up. So then they find, you know, they, they meet up and, and, and um, Tommy's like, you set me up? He's like, nah, I said shut up. And Vincent was like, I set it up. And he was like, you know, um, y'all got 24 hours to give me $2 million because Tariq messed up my, you know, messed up my supplies by giving him, you know, the real drugs mixed with those, um, you know, placebos, watered down drugs, whatever it is. And I'm like, that, it didn't cost you $10 million, $2 million. He says, no, it didn't. But it's interest. And I was like, ooh. Like, can y'all just bust, like, can y'all just shoot Tariq in a kneecap or something? Like, because he, he's the cause of this stuff. But, you guys, that was the episode. Be sure to like the video. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys later.